Gavin Stevens. That's okay. I, my, my parents do the same thing. When I go to their house, they have a note and they gotta read, oh fuck, who's, ah, oh, it's our son, G Gavin Stefans, eh? Why do we have the same last name? Oh, I don't care about you, son. So they would say, how's everybody doing, right? How are you? Yeah. Happy New Year. Is that, can I still say that? Yeah. Good, when, is, when can you cut that off? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> this guy's had enough of that shit. <laughs> so this better stop now or someone's gonna die. Stop telling me Happy New Year, I'm gonna kill someone. Good, uh, when, did you say February? Oh, uh, Black History Month, right? <laughs> Black people wanna hear that shit. <laughs> no, ha Happy New Year during Black History Month. I like how awkward everyone gets in this room. <laughs> you talk about race, that's so white. Uh, uh, can we talk about TV? It's, uh, it's, it's an interesting time for TV right now. Can we stop talking about race? I don't want to talk about it. So, uh, so who's ready for bed? Like, let's, uh, <laughs> right? It's too late now, isn't it? We got to ease our way into this. Wouldn't this be awesome? We just like went home right now. <laughs> no, I'll do a good show. I'll try. <laughs> I'll try. Fuck, no, I'm at the age. I'm ready to do a coma. I could do, not a, not a month long coma. That's too long, but a week all inclusive coma. Doesn't that sound nice? Uh, if you can't afford a vacation, coma, am I right? Just growing your beer, eating your own fat for a week. Oh. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. I'm, uh, I'm 43. I'm gonna be 40. Holy shit. That just hit me. I'm gonna be 44 this year. <laughs> so you hear that? You hear that sound? That's, a, that's an odd man almost dying. He is just <laughs> cells falling apart. Ooh! He wasn't cheery. He was looking for a lifeline. He was, ooh, do you have a kidney? <laughs> What's your blood type? Fuck. Are you 44, sir? Yeah. Good for you. How's it going? <laughs> he just fell down. <laughs> uh. That's how you fall when you're 44. Like, like you're falling down a well. Like just, uh, but it's just a curb. It's just a curb. Yeah, man. I, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I, you know what's the best part about being old? You can just ditch people. Like you don't give a fuck anymore. You know how many friends you just like cut out of your life because they're fucking assholes? They don't even have to be fucking assholes. They can say stupid shit. Like, hey, let's go to a cornfield. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> Who are you? Uh, my corn's in a can. I'm done with you. That, and then you just accept your boringness. Does anybody, who's boring in here by applause? Good for you, yeah. When you're young, you think you're interesting, but you're not, right? You just figured out ways to, discar to, to distract yourself, like you eat books and cocaine, that's all you do, right? And you're like, oh, I'm an interesting person because I'm high and I'm reading War and Peace. <laughs> I'm high and reading War and Peace, that's it. But fucking, when you get old, your dreams start becoming boring. Like two weeks ago, I had a dream I was buying an iPad. That's a real fucking dream. <laughs> I went to bed and I dreamt I was lining up at Best Buy. <laughs> and I wasn't even at the front of the line. I lined up in my imagination <laughs> to buy an iPad. That's, that's the dreams now. It's just fucking, I had a dream once I was signing up for softball. It's fucking, <laughs> just signing up. I didn't play. <laughs> I had a clipboard in my hand. That was the dream. I was like, oh, that's good. And nothing happened. <laughs> Fuck. And when you're 20s, you think you're so interesting. And then you hit, like, like everything you do is unique and original. And then you hit 34, and suddenly you have a favorite font. That's how that works. <laughs> my dad's in the 70s. I told him about he loves boring. I told him about that dream. And he was like, oh, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> Because when you're old, life just randomly becomes exciting, right? When you get like 60 and up, like, that's why old people have handles in their showers. It's like, you're 60, you're taking a shower, life's like, hey, let's take friction out of here, see what happens. And you're on the highway to the danger zone. It just randomly happens. When I turned 40, I got a blank fortune cookie. You know how terrifying that is? Someone just put a piece of paper in a cookie and gave it to me in a food court. 38, that's just, a, you know, that's just a court cookie. 44, you're not leaving the, the food court. You're dying there. That's, uh, that's where I'm at. It's good, you guys, uh, it seems like fun, right? It's a, okay. Uh, who's, uh, who's on the date? Uh, the miserable 
relationship. <laughs> it's too long. I never heard someone say that before. I, I want to punch you in the dick. <laughs> no, when I heard it, I was like, fuck you. I gotta live with your shit? With your shitty underwear all day long? <laughs> That's shit. You've, you've washed his underwear, right? No. You've never washed his underwear? It just stays on the floor. It just stays on the floor. So he's wearing crusty underwear as we speak. <laughs> well, there's your revenge. <laughs> I get where you're coming from, sir. Too long. <laughs> it's got shit stained underwear on the front. That's how bad it is. Just keeps flipping it around. Nothing changes. It's like a Rubik's cube of shit stains. Did you say no? I'm glad you said you're on a date, though. A lot of people, when they're married, don't think they're on a date. But you're on a date. There's effort in this, right? Yeah, is anybody else on? Oh, I guess uh, Mike already asked if people are on a date. I won't date anymore, fuck that. <laughs> no, it, it, approaching strangers seems terrifying now. That's, that's why I don't date. That and my wife, that's uh... <laughs> <laughs> now, my wife was like, if I were to die, she asked me, where, where would you go to meet women? I'm like, I'm not. I am, I'm investing in fleshlights in a backyard wrestling federation. <laughs> I'm not approaching women, are you fucking crazy? I'm never going to the gym again. This is, I'm, I'm becoming a monk. That's, it is hard to approach a woman. Ladies, you know what it's like? You wanna know what it's like for a guy to try to approach you? This, if you wanna know that experience, all you need to do right now is go outside and try to sell VCRs. That's what it's like. <laughs> it's like selling VCRs with Jesus pamphlets stuffed inside. <laughs> Terrifying. You're terrifying people. I mean, we're horrible. Don't get me wrong. Men are scary and horrible, but women, this, that's hard to just talk to you? Fuck that. I can't do it. Just be yourself. Be myself. Myself sucks. <laughs> I come up to you, hey, hey, uh, have you watched Deep Space Nine Star Trek? Oh, let me just take these panties off first. My wife has been, we've been in a relationship for over 20 years. We are ourselves. And it's horrible, and we love that. You, you've built up enough callus to be with someone who's themselves, right? That's, that's love. You, you, uh, you have to love that person slightly more than you hate them. That's the key to love. That's it. If, if you don't find yourself late at night, you know, staring at their stupid face when they're sleeping, and they're just breathing through their fucking mouth, and you're like... <laughs> the fuck, I could just kill you right now. You've never been in love. You don't know what it's like. Is there, are there any 20-year-olds uh, in here? Anybody, any millennials and shit? We're good for you. That's a, it's a, it's a tough time to be in your 20s, right? There's no jobs. All right, you guys are this, you guys are inventing careers. That's you got to admire that. That's how shitty my generation did to yours. Like we started becoming newspaper boys at 44, and we passed those savings on to you. Like this is the first time in human history you can use the words professional and dog walker in the same sentence. <laughs> like it, everyone's just inventing careers. I've been to like board game cafes and ping pong bars. It's like you're creating an economy based on an eight-year-old's birthday party. <laughs> my, my dad's from a, a, the generation where you had a job you hated because they pay you, right? Like, right? He'd do sheet metal, which is fucking horrible work. He hated it. But, and he used to come home and yell at us and just not, you know, that's what dads did back then. You know, oh, fucking, I can't believe it. No, no millennial father's yelling at their kid after a day of dog walking. Nobody's, <laughs> nobody's that angry. You know, it's like, I didn't wake up at the crack of noon for this horse shit. I'm out there three days a week, four hours a day, I don't need it. I had the sun in my eyes today. The sun was directly in my eyeballs. <laughs> Fuck, I'd love to be a millennial. I'd have an Etsy fair trade abortion clinic. That's what I'd have. <laughs> Call it easy, come, easy, go. <laughs> There's that girl Mike was talking about. <laughs> That's what he was talking about. You guys have a lot of fun. Thanks a lot. Have a good night, everybody. Gavin Stevens, everybody. Keep it going. Bro.